Hello, artist, beautiful, amazing artist. Welcome back to the Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Folsom. I'm an artist. I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm pretty much everything that I ever want to be, and it seems to constantly be evolving, and I love it. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited to have you all here. Today we have an amazing um, question and topic that came in from Anonymous. By the way, if you wish to remain anonymous, whenever you are emailing in a topic, just say so in the email. You can email info at artlifewithkelly.com and email in any question, any topic that you would like to have discussed. Uh, or like to hear my thoughts on um, here on the Art Life Conversations podcast. And before we get into that topic today, we have a word from our sponsor who is, you guessed it, Kelly Balsam. I'm the sponsor. (laughs) All right, so I just want to let you guys know right quick that open enrollment is now happening for the Art Life School program. It is open from now both for monthly and the annual sign up from now until April 11th at midnight. Um, In the Art Life School program, I help artists of all levels from beginners learning, just learning, picking up a paintbrush, learning how to mix paint, learning all the basics, learning all the fundamentals of the oil painting craft to intermediate levels who are really needing to deepen their um, skills, right? Hone their skills even further on an independent, more independent level and really find their own artistic voice because that is how you go from an intermediate level into an advanced, more professional master level. You have to know uh, what it is that you want to create. You have to find who you are independently outside of other artists, outside of um, teachers, right? And then also in the Art Life School, I help advanced or professional artists who are wanting to get uh, some marketing help, some sale, some sales help, right? Some biz help, right? So, um, and also just ongoing career support um, as all of us professional artists know we all go through our own little slumps and ruts and need some boost of inspiration, maybe need some support, need some coaching along the way as well. Just because we've reached the the height of the mountaintop, right, doesn't mean that we don't ever um, struggle, that we don't ever need inspiration um, and support along the way. So I help artists in all those levels. It's really a, an amazing and awesome um, program. We have an incredible community of artists um, that involves all these levels and they're helping each other as well. Um, So go and find out more about the Art Life School program at artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I dot com and um, read all of the details, see everything that you get. With that, we'll be doing a live run through of Finding Your Artistic Voice in May. So you're definitely going to want to get signed up. So go check it out. If you have any questions, you can email info at artlifewithkelly.com. All right, awesome, awesome. So let's get into the topic today from Anonymous. Um, She asked, how do you know, oh oh, wait, I'm sorry, Um, wondering how to know at what point your paintings can be sold. How do you know when you are good enough to be able to sell your paintings? Um, Okay, so I always find this question really uh, interesting because it's almost as if uh, the person thinks that there is some kind of um, checklist or graduation or stamp of approval. And as human beings, we like those sort of things and even our, our cultures, our society is set up that way. We go to school, we get certifications, we get um, you know, degrees. Um, and, you know, I went to art college with a ton of other artists and we all left with a degree. And yet so many artists still struggled with the confidence to sell their work. Um, they still didn't believe that their work was good enough, right? So this this mysterious good enough, when is the work good enough, right? Or when do you know that you're ready to start selling your paintings? And I, honestly, my answer to this is you are ready to start selling your paintings when A, you need the money 
and can sell your paintings and B, somebody else wants to buy it, right? Somebody else wants to buy your painting. That's how you know that you are good enough or AKA ready. So I feel like this like waiting game that can happen uh, whenever we're, we're becoming an artist, we're studying, we're growing, we're learning the fundamentals, we're starting to make our own work. Um, but then sometimes there's like this waiting period or like when I get there, right? Or when I get good enough, when the quality of the work is there, then I will blank. Then I will um, start exhibiting my work. Then I will start selling my work, right? Um, and the problem with this is like you never really get there. <laughs> and it's not really clear what there is, you know? Um, it's not really clear like what are the, what are the markers? What are the benchmarks um, that you're judging that against? You know, how are you gonna know that you've gotten there, that you've gotten good enough, right? Are you going to um, put that in the in the determinant hit, determination of somebody else's opinion? Uh, maybe maybe you're studying with a teacher and you're waiting for them to say, "Hey, guess what? You're good enough now to go do this thing." I can tell you right now, most teachers are first of all not even that interested, sadly, in your personal success. Um, or they don't know that you are waiting for them to check off those boxes for you or give you the A-OK, -okay, you're good enough now, you can go out and do it sort of thing, right? Um, so I just think that that is a huge mistake. A huge mistake is, is waiting, this waiting game. Waiting is not a strategy. It is never a strategy, right? So I feel like there is a natural progression that starts to happen as you're learning, as you're growing. You might be posting your work on social media, um, not really even intending to sell it, but somebody, you know, messages you and says, oh my gosh, I love that painting. Is that for sale? Or they comment, is this for sale? You know, they're, they love the painting, they're interested in it. You know, so sometimes these things just happen organically when people start to um, acknowledge your work and start to express an interest in it. You know, that's one way that you know that you're ready to sell. The other way is, um, <laughs> well, what happened for me is just like, I needed money, you know? I was in art school and we had an opportunity at the art school, it was my third year in art school, and we had an opportunity which was a um, student run show. Basically, the students were responsible for setting up the show. Um, you could put in as much work as you wanted to. You could you could sell, you know, however much work you were able to sell during um, the show, during the duration of the show. Um, and so I was like, yes, I'm all in. And what's funny is um, the other shows that went on in the prior three years were faculty juried shows. These were faculty juried shows and I got rejected from most of them <laughs> because the fac most of the faculty members did not like my artwork. They thought it was um, too antiquated, too old fashioned, not pushing art forward, you know, not pushing the envelope, not creative enough, right? So here I had like this stack of reasons why I wasn't ready to sell my work yet, right? Like this stack of rejections in my past from um, these faculty members. Now, if I had allowed those things to stop me, if I had allowed somebody else's opinion of my artwork to stop me from taking action and moving forward, I would not be sitting here today talking with you, okay? I would not be working with hundreds of artists um, online in the Art Life School program. 
it just never would have happened, right? So at some point you have to take your own power back and you also have to get out there and test it. You have to get out there and try things. You've got to put yourself out there and with that comes uh, you know, risking, risking rejection, right? Risking failure. Um, I could have participated in this student holiday art sale show and and risked risk failure, risked rejection. I could have, you know, not sold very many paintings and that would have been feedback for me, uh, you know, in some way to to see, you know, what I, what I needed to work on or what maybe I needed to get a stronger skill set. Hell, maybe I just needed to frame my paintings differently. Who knows? You know, you don't, when you get the feedback, it doesn't, it can mean a variety of things. It's really just feedback for you to then um, see like how you need to tweak or adjust your approach, tweak or adjust your strategy, right? So, but luckily I decided, you know what? I've got all these paintings. I've got so many paintings stacked up from the last, you know, three years, especially that, that year because I gave up working. I gave up working my part-time jobs, especially my job in the summer. So I gave up money so that I could just paint every day so that I could get better at my painting skills. And so I did this that year and I had a ton of independent paintings. I had, I will say that's the only thing is like you, when you start selling, you do need to make sure that the majority of the work that you're selling is your own work, um, is independent work and not just lesson work. So that would be the only caveat I would say there. And beginners, total beginners really should not be thinking at all about selling. If somebody happens to want to buy one of your paintings, that's fine. You know, definitely sell it. You know, get the money for it if you want to, if you if you need that income, right? Um, but I would, you know, wait at least until you're kind of at an intermediate level and have some a good handle on some basic skills. They don't even have to be great. You don't even have to be great at the basic skills, right? Um, but I would say the only caveat is just making sure that you are doing mostly independent, you know, work. So, so I did that and I had all of these independent paintings laying around and because I gave up working over the summer, you know, in my part-time job at the school, um, so that I could paint more and get better at painting, um, you know, I was hurting for money. <laughs> I needed some money, you know, to pay the rent um, and buy some food. And, you know, the bank account was getting real low. So this was December and I had decided to give up my jobs in May so that I could just paint more. And I had a certain amount of money saved up, but it wasn't much, you know, and I was living real cheap. So anyway, so that was also part of the motivation for me was, oh my gosh, this is not a juried show. I can work the show. I can show up. I can look nice. I can frame my work as best as I could with the limited money that I had, you know, and I can sell these paintings. Like I can try, you know, I can try to sell these paintings. And so that's what I did. I, I, went to this holiday art sale i had not only did i have the paintings hanging that i had space allotted for because you could only hang so many <laughs> and students were even like people were making fun of me right like my peers were making fun of me saying oh it's the kelly Folsom show you know <laughs> um because as soon as i would sell a painting i would i had paintings in reserve i had paintings in reserve um, in, tucked away in this little stairwell in the building that we were, you know, um, it was like this old house that I think it was called the Sill House that we were showing our artwork in. And so I would go back after a painting sold and pull another painting, you know, before somebody else could get my spot. I was like, no, that's my spot. You know, I need some money. <laughs> so um, needless to say, I had a great time. Um, I sold a lot of paintings. I think maybe I made um, a couple thousand dollars at that show, which back then, uh, and it ran, you know, for a few few weeks, but the majority of the sales came in, you know, that opening weekend. Um, but I was just so, so grateful, you know, to have that that financial income to make up 
the money really that I had lost um, and, and more that I had lost over the last six months from, you know, giving up those part time jobs so that I could paint more and get better at my craft. Um, none of these paintings were perfect by any means, you know. Um, I would say maybe the skill level was at an intermediate level, um, <laughs> just barely beyond beginner, I would say. But you know what? There was spirit in them, and I liked the paintings enough. Um, I felt good about them, you know, going to homes that, you know, people would want to buy, buy them and have them in their homes. And they also, I knew that some people were buying them just to support, you know, an up and coming young woman artist. You know, I knew they loved the paintings, but I also knew that part of it for them was like, really showing that support for me, you know, and you should never feel bad about any of that. Like, people buy for emotional reasons. They buy work for emotional reasons. And that could also include that they're really showing you, hey, I believe in what you're doing. And um, so I'm gonna buy this painting, you know, to support you and to help you on your journey. Um, so, but nobody ever was ever, ever, ever gonna tell me, hey, Kelly, knock, knock, knock. Hey, Kelly, um, you're good enough to sell your paintings now. <laughs> Nobody was ever going to tell me that. Um, the only people who you could say by default told me that were the galleries that I got into. But galleries did not come after me, right? Like I went after galleries. I had to knock, right? Um, as the scripture verse says, right? Knock and <laughs> ask and you shall receive. You know, knock and it will be answered. Something like that. I'm sure I'm butchering that. But you have to ask. You have to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to be courageous enough and vulnerable enough to risk failure, to risk defeat, to risk rejection, right? Um, you have to do it first. And unfortunately, in the art world, nobody is going to push you out of the nest, so to speak. Um, now, I will say with the artists that I work with in the art life school, you know, I do a little more pushing out of the nest because I care, you know, because I care that that somebody goes after, you know, after their dreams. I care that that somebody knows that, you know, that they have really reached a level of skill that is quite admirable, right? Like, go get them, tiger. <laughs> so I'm a little bit different in that way as a, as a mentor and as a teacher that I will really push people to get out there sometimes maybe even before they're ready and you know um, I always try to be careful about that because somebody just may not want to do those things. Somebody may not want to sell their work. Somebody may not be interested in um, participating in juried shows or putting themselves out there and that's just fine too you know um, but I'm just here to say like you have to decide for yourself when you're good enough. Um, and I would say being good enough really just doesn't have anything to do with it in my book. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't. Um, this this mysterious phrase, good enough. And, and I know I've struggled with this thought my whole life, you know, being good enough. Am I good enough? Am I good enough? I've struggled with that probably from two years old. You know, this is old stuff. It's really, really old stuff. It's old wounds. It's really the wounded self, right? And the wounded self is not our highest self. So we always want to be operating out of our highest self version, not the wounded self. Um, the highest self does believe in herself, right? She does act in, in courage, take acts of faith and take steps of courage. She does put herself out there. She does risk failure or risk loss or perhaps even risk rejection, you know? Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that um, the people who made comments about me, my peers who made fun of me during that show, I'm not going to say sit here and say that those things did not hurt because they did, because I want to fit in just like everybody else, right? Um, I, but I've learned, you know, now that I'm in my 40s, like apparently me fitting in is not the point. <laughs> And it's not really, it's not really my forte, um, you know, and that's okay. 
Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say that none of that hurt. Um, even having faculty members not really showing much confidence in me or appreciation for what I did really hurt. That was really, really a struggle, um, you know, for me. But at the end of the day, we are the ones who have to decide that we are good enough, that our work is good enough as is in this moment, especially if somebody wants it, especially if it's bringing joy and inspiration and beauty into somebody else's life. Who am I to say then that it's not good enough, right? Like they love it, they want it, they want to buy it. Um, who am I to say, oh no, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. Like you're robbing them of their blessing, right? You're robbing them and, and they can go find it somewhere else. So they're really not gonna miss out, right? Like they, they are so many artists out there, they can go find that beauty and that inspiration and that joy from somebody else down the road. So in the end, you know, it's really you that are missing out by holding yourself back saying that you're not good enough yet um, so I mean other than that just technically speaking just to recap you know the only thing I would say is just make sure that the majority of the work that you are putting out there is independent work once you hit that intermediate skill level you want to make sure that you are doing I would say at least 50 50 50 percent student work class work let's say or lesson work however you want to word that and 50% independent work. As you continue to grow in your skills and improve in your skills, you wanna increase the percentage of independent work that you're doing because that is really ownership in your work and that is really claiming your art artistic identity when you start to do more of this independent work. Um, vice versa, if you're a beginner, I see a lot of beginners shoot themselves in the foot because they start off wanting to do 100% independent work and no lesson work. So if you're a total beginner, that's really gonna screw you up, you know? So if you're a total beginner, you really only wanna be doing about 20% lesson work, I'm sorry, 20% independent work, 80% lesson work, class work, student work, whether that's at a college or like if you're in the art life school program or studying online, no matter where you're studying, if you're a total beginner, you wanna be studying 80% of the time doing lesson work, 20% independent work. Um, and then for advanced, you know, more professional artists who um, have really advanced their skill level, you want to make sure that you're doing 80% independent work and 20% um, class lesson work or workshops or things like that, right? So you have to make sure that your balance of um, lesson, class work, and independent work is at the right balance for the skill level that you're at. Okay, so that you don't get out of whack and so you don't shoot yourself in the foot basically um, on your um, art life journey. So that, to me, that's the only caveat is making sure that you have enough independent work, which means at least one piece, <laughs> at least one independent painting um, that you can get out there and start selling and then um, go from there. Okay, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful to you. As always, I'm super curious to hear from you, your thoughts on uh, the discussions, um, further topics that you want to have discussed, just email those in at info at artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I dot com, and let me know. Um, I'm happy to hear from you and happy to um, give you my, my thoughts and um, insights on on these things. Um, and then also, uh, as a final reminder, the Art Life School program is closing the doors to enrollment April 11th at midnight. So if you're at all interested in that, then hop over to artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I dot com, and check out all the details on there. You can sign up monthly uh, with no contract or you can sign up for the year. When you sign up for the year, you get a lot of really juicy bonuses um, as well as a discount. You get two months free if you sign up for the year. So if you know you're all in, baby, then sign up for the year because you're gonna get the best deal and you're gonna get four additional live um, workshop programs throughout the year as well. Okay. All right, my friends, I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, happy painting. Bye.